Welcome to another OAuth video. In this video we're going to connect to LinkedIn and Google Plus APIs and retrieve information about our user. So what I've done here first is made a copy of the example OAuth scene and we can see that on the OAuth interceptor game object we already have two scripts one configured for LinkedIn and one configured for Google OAuth. So let's start with LinkedIn first. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to get our client ID and secrets. For that, we're going to go to our LinkedIn developer account. The first thing we have to do is we have to create a new application. I'm going to call it Li Test. Li Test. Upload a logo. For the application use, uh, we're going to do other. Our website is http unity3dassets.com. And phone number. Okay. I'm going to submit. So now in our new application, we have our client IDs and client secret. Uh, the default application permissions, uh, we're going to stick with just a basic profile. That should be enough to retrieve the user's profile information. And for the redirect URLs, for now, what we have to do is specify this redirect URI right here. This is a uh, server that is running, hosted by us. It is responsible for exchanging an authorization code for an access token and returning it back to Unity. So we're going to paste that information here. We're going to add it and update. Now what I'm going to do is copy the client ID, put it back in here, get the secret, put it in here, Okay, so let's make sure the scopes. Um, scopes is where we have to put in our basic profile. Uh, this other information came from the LinkedIn documentation and everything else should be okay. So one problem with LinkedIn here is that after retrieving an access token, it seems like it can be immediately used. So uh, what we've set here is we've defined a waiting period of five seconds between retrieving the access token and using that access token. Um, I haven't seen the need for this in other applications, but with LinkedIn, it seems to be necessary at this time. Okay, so we have all this information populated. Um, we're going to turn this interceptor on. It is going to intercept any calls made to this host api.linkedin.com so now what we have to do is we need to actually make create and make a call so let's look take a look at their documentation real quick okay getting started with the rest api it goes through how to authenticate oh here so okay now we know that it's uh, returning information in xml format by default this looks like is the URI that we would want to hit. Uh, we can also add the format JSON to our query string to return JSON, which we do want because it's much easier to work with JSON than XML. So our request will look like this, which will return this response. Okay, great. So reading through when we hit operations that where we want to send data to LinkedIn, it looks like if we set the content type to application JSON, uh, the uh, LinkedIn server will know that we are sending JSON instead of the default XML. Also, some APIs, instead of having to specify the format of JSON up here, if we had sent the accept header with application JSON, some servers know that, hey, we're expecting JSON back because we're accepting JSON back from the as the part of the response. Go to the REST console. It's it's nice that some uh, applications have this. Okay, retrieve basic profile data. That sounds like what we want. What we want. 
my format JSON. Um, let's see what happens. We're gonna send it over. Okay, we need some authentication. OM. Okay, allow access. Okay, select the method again and send. Okay. So it looks like uh, the alternative is to also send the OAuth token as part of the URI. Um, I know that most applications expect it in the as part of the authorization header. So we're going to stick with the authorization header instead of sending it in a query string, which we could do as well. All right, great. So we have a response. We are going to use this link, uh, LinkedIn JSON response here to create a C-sharp class later on. But let's see if we can duplicate what we just did in this console in Unity. So what we have here is we already have an example for LinkedIn in the examples folder. We're going to copy it over. So we're going to copy this example into our example folder that we're working on. Okay, and let's call this um, li test. Okay, okay, we're gonna go back in here, and we're going to open up this. So we've opened up the li test. Uh, let's rename the nas namespace to ligp for LinkedIn Google Plus example. And we're going to call this the li test. And it's going to inherit from mono behavior. So then what we're going to do is we're going to basically drop this class um, uh, into our scene and run with it. So as you can see, um, if you've seen any of the other Web API kit tutorials, this is how we create an operation. So we're going to tell that we're going to we're going to tell the operation that we're going to pass the access token uh, as a header this is the path to the endpoint we want to hit it's going to be a get operation and content type application json well this is not really necessary um, because we're not sending any data but you know what i also like to include HTTP accept header as application JSON uh, just because I've gotten used to uh, kind of reminds me the data types that I'm working with in here the timeout for the operation is 10 seconds which is plenty to return the data and the provider we're going to use is the included uh, unity web, web request provider there are various other providers that we can use and the one included with unity is just fine so we're going to name this class LinkedIn Me, which is appropriate because it's going to return information about me. We are going to, uh, so you, you see that they expected a, a query string as part of your URI to define what format we're going to receive this information in. And this is how we set that up. We create a field uh, with the value of JSON and we're going to attribute it with HTTP query string. And basically what is going to happen is the format JSON key value pair is going to get added to the URI when we execute. So um, another thing here is when the request completes, we're going to log the response to the screen and see what that looks like. And here is the class start method. What we're going to do is um, we're just going to new up this operation that we created. We're going to call the send on it. And then here's what, where we define any code that we want to execute when this operation starts, when it succeeds, fails, or completes. So this should be sufficient. Let's save that. Go back to our scene. Let's wait for it to rebuild. Oops. Okay, it's enabled. Let's make sure our LinkedIn interceptor is enabled. Let's go to the console, clear out any messages. One thing I want to mention before we start the scene up is um, the interceptor has a log verbose checkbox. 
and for extra logging we want to turn this on also because I might have had access tokens uh, already saved on this machine I want to check do not load token on awake which will force the consent for a new token so now let's start the scene up and I'll explain to you what happens so behind the scenes what happened is the operation to get our profile information executed but it ended with a unauthorized HTTP code of 401 and then the intercept took the OAuth interceptor took over and said hey well you don't have a token to execute this operation so what we're gonna do is we're going to go through the motions of getting the token so first thing is this our, our application in LinkedIn uh, wants to get information about us so okay yeah that's fine why not allow now and then this is our redirector response saying that authentication was completed the redirector was able to exchange the authorization code for an access token and we were successful uh, this is the same flow on iOS and Android basically uh, a web page will open in the most likely Safari right on iOS because that's the default browser you're going to get this same message is going to prompt you to log in after you're logged in we can return to our application and we can start going and looking at what happened here so the first thing that happened is we started a request to the LinkedIn endpoint the request was built using the unity web request client to this URI and you can see that the header well there's no authorization header here right now so what had happened is the response aired out with a status 401 and that's more clearly visible here 401 and our interceptor is set up that if it sees a status code of 401 it will take over it will add that operation to a failed queue and proceed to retrieve a token on our behalf then once the token is retrieved the operation that failed or operations that failed are retried again and here you can see that the interceptor actually added the authorization header and we got a 200 OK from the LinkedIn API and here is the information which is the same information that we saw in the AppyG console so next what I want to do is let's take this return information and actually instead of leaving it as JSON we can turn it into a instance of a C-sharp class so it's easier to work with within our scene 